that's the upper right hand picture. Okay, I wanted to show you that, uh, that method first so you can see why only mix by volume. Most of the component epoxies uh, that come in bottles are one to one ratios by volume. Here's a little tip um, um, regarding the bottles. What you want to do is cut the tips of the bottles to the exact amount uh, so that the opening of the bottle is the same diameter. So when you go to squeeze out uh, the epoxy from either the resin or the hardener, you'll get this, uh, the same amount each time. What, if, uh, what I do if I'm mixing epoxy in enough for, say, eight irons? I pull a strip of masking tape about four or five inches long. Some like to use cardboard, others coffee can lid. It really doesn't matter as long as you have a clean surface you can mix on. Then I squeeze out four uh, length beads about three inches long with the part A. And then I take the part B bottle and squeeze out the same four three inch long uh, beads of uh, epoxy. But the one thing I don't do is put them right on top of one another. I, uh, I put them right next to one another like uh, what's pictured on the bottom slide in the center. I said you're eyeballing it. So if you feel you need slightly more of one versus another, now you can make your adjustments. The same 24-hour epoxy uh, that are in the bottles um, are also available in convenient individual packets, uh, at least from Harico. These packets have enough material um, to epoxy up to four clubs and come pre-measured. All you do is uh, cut the packets, squeeze out the material, and then mix and you're ready to go. Epoxy is also available in cartridges. These are packaged in smaller quantities and actually cost more per ounce than bottles, uh, just like the single packets. But many club makers don't mind paying for the convenience because you just pull the trigger and then the right proportions are dispensed. However, when you, you start a new cartridge, the different parts never come out evenly at first, at least not for me. So what, what I do is I squeeze some out on a piece of tape. Um, but have a, a second piece of tape ready so um, when the epoxy, the different parts uh, flow equally, I could start to mix them together on that new piece of tape. And then after that, uh, you're set uh, the next time you want to use the cartridge. It's kind of a quick tip. Okay, there's also special epoxy uh, dispensing guns that are available or you can just simply use the plungers the cartridge kits come with. The plungers are usually in a one-to-one -one or two-to-one ratio. They're sized to fit um, to, um, to tell you which are which. So for hobbyists or even the grizzled ver veterans who are building one club at a time may find the cartridges to be very convenient. Make sure to, to clean your cartridges before putting the cap back on as well. There's two tiny slits for the epoxy to flow through. And oftentimes, uh, they're different color, the, the different colors are visible, like part A is black and part B, uh, or B is uh, clear. What you do is just wipe off the opening to avoid contamination, and then put the cap back on by matching the, the two colors. Epoxies um, are also available in different colors. Uh, black probably is the most popular today because black hides imperfections or gaps between the ferrules or in cases you're putting a plug into a through bore pl uh, uh, club like Callaway. However, a uh, light gray or amber might be concealed better with a putter which does not take a ferrule. Even if you had a light gray or amber epoxy, you can always add a few drops of fast dry ena enamel paint, uh, paint like uh, hobby paint. Uh, to tint it black or really any color that you want. Okay. Now um, we have hopefully prepared enough epoxy for the task at hand. So how long do you mix the epoxy? 
it's really impossible to overmix unless, of course, you're using fast setting epoxy and mix for the entire working time. But the minimum should be at least 15 seconds for small batches and more for larger batches. Just make sure it looks consistent. To blend the two parts together, use some sort of mixing stick. Now, this doesn't have to be rocket science. Uh, rocket science. You can use a number of items. I've used the same quarter-inch wooden dowel for the past five years. Once I'm done uh, mixing, I wipe off the excess off the, the uh, dowel, and it's good to go the next time. There's no need to throw away a popsicle stick every time you mix a batch of epoxy or use an expensive device. Some club makers resort to using a nail, a T, or whatever they have that's going to do the job. You want to test fit each of the shafts into the appropriate club heads. If you're building multiple clubs at the time, the number on the uh, shaft should be noted with a Sharpie pen or something to identify which club it's going to go into. Let's say one of the shafts is a little looser than the rest and you get a little play. You can solve this problem by using shafting beads or fine particles that act as fillers. But don't make the mistake of adding shafting beads to the whole batch of epoxy because some of the shafts might be tight or might end up um, or, or going to be tight and adding shafting beads is going to make it worse. What you want to do, just scrape some of the epoxy aside that you mixed and add a very small portion of the shafting beads, like in the order of 4 to 6 percent by volume. It won't take much. It's uh, kind of like a pinch. Uh, too much and you'll start to affect the strength of the epoxy. And the shafting beads, that's something that Harico sells as well. Okay. There are uh, two ways to apply the epoxy once it's thoroughly mixed. One we'll call the mixing stick method, even though it could be a nail or a T. And the other is the shafting method. Using the mixing stick method, you want to apply a thin layer of epoxy to the abraded portion of the shaft, as well as a, apply a thin layer of epoxy to the inside of the hosel. Note here that I said thin layer. Don't fill up the hosel. In my opinion, you're not only just wasting epoxy, but you're creating a potential hazard. If excessive epoxy goes up into the narrow opening of a graphite shaft, it's going to create an epoxy core. If it exceeds the top of the hosel, this could cause a shear point at which the shaft could break. I find many shafts that break off above the hosel can be pinpoint to the use of excessive epoxy. In the re repair department when I worked at Dynacraft, we would collect the long epoxy core pieces that we were able to fish out of the shafts as souvenirs. You'd be surprised just how long some of these would be. Well, I wanted to share you this story here. There was this one set of clubs I got, uh, and because the customer said the sh 